G'day guys, welcome back to Cakes by Chopper. Today we have a freestanding playable pool cake for you. Now this concept was part thanks to my flatmate Food Point, links are in the description. Uh, I was looking for inspiration in the candy aisle and we saw these chocolate balls and he suggested a pool table and that set my mind in motion and I come up with a freestanding playable one. I hope you guys enjoy this cake, stay tuned and I'll show you how to make it. But first, we're going to take the shot. Alright, let's pick the cue of choice. Here we go. To get started on this cake, I needed a rectangle cake board, but I couldn't find any at the stores, so I had to buy a round one and then improvise. So what I did was cut out some cardboard to the shape of the cake, and then I trimmed off a round cake board, which it needs to be really firm because you're going to make the legs and this is the base that's going to hold the cake up. So if you've got a rectangle one, just skip this part completely. If you can only find a round one, then this part is for you. To make it a freestanding cake, I got some sturdy chopsticks and trimmed them down to the height I needed. I actually went back and trimmed them down again because I didn't want it so high. Then I marked out on my cake board where I wanted the supports to go and using a screwdriver, I just twisted it through and that was about the same size as the tip of the chopstick so it didn't slide all the way down. Um, I didn't need to add any glue or anything, I could just push it in and it was quite a tight fit. Once I'd drilled out all the holes with the screwdriver, I put in the chopsticks to see if it would support and sit flat, which it did, which meant I could start gluing it all together where I got a hot glue gun, glued my two pieces of cardboard together, and then I marked out where the holes would be so I didn't have to push it through later on, glued the bottom support base on and matched that up with the holes, then it was time to grab some aluminium foil and fold that over, tape it to the bottom just so the cake wasn't sitting on the raw cardboard. Now this gave quite a sturdy base and I just tucked the legs in and put that to the side and you're on to the next step which is prepping your cake. As some of you already know, most of my cakes come from a A4 size baking tray so I just got the cake leveler and split that in half which makes it the perfect measurements for this and I filled it with a buttercream and I left a little perimeter around the edge because I wanted to get the ganache which is a firm set ganache which is going to hold the sides up for us. So I just piped on a nice border and then put in some support things where the pockets would go and then it was time to put the top of the cake on which I turned upside down so I could get a nice flat top. Before popping that into the fridge to set I filled in the edges with the firm set ganache to give us that stronger support. Now to make some fondant pieces we're going to roll out some thin black with some tie loss powder added and then I use the fondant roller to shape these and cut it off so it makes a complete cylinder don't forget to put in some corn flour so it doesn't stick to the roller once I got it measured up and trimmed off evenly I put a little bit of water on to glue it together and then I trimmed the edges off and separated into two you need to make six of these because these are the pockets and I made them a little bit oversized because we'll come back later and trim them off. Tie loss powder helps them set in about half an hour so you can take them off the rod. Okay, to make the pull cues, I use the full length chopsticks and then just wrapped some black fondant around the base and trimmed it off to make it a nice neat handle. Moving on to your tabletop, I got some green fondant, kept it nice and rectangle and rolled it out. As I mentioned before, my cake trays are the same size as an A4 piece of paper and so you, when you get your cake board you should measure that out a little bit bigger than the actual cake just so the fondant can sit on the sides. Using a normal piece of paper you can trim off your green fondant and it'll be the same size as the pool table's top and sit that aside to firm up a little bit. Whilst that's doing its thing you can crumb coat your cake. Now with the firm set ganache it's just adding a little less cream than you normally would so it sets firmer. Uh, you can cover the cake easily so it doesn't tear up the crumbs just by heating it up in the microwave for 20 seconds and it goes a lot thinner and you can smooth it on nice and easy. Make sure you've got your entire cake covered and smooth it out as smooth as possible and then you're going to mark out with one of those set tunnels where you want your pockets and then using a sharp tool which I actually found later that switching to an apple coral was a lot easier and a lot less messy. Keep in mind when you're doing this, you want to stay as close to the edge as possible without compromising the structure of the corners. 
Uh, here you can see I'm just using the apple corer to just take out little bits at a time, staying within that measurement from the pipe. Push in the fondant piping that you've made, and as you can see, I've just popped them all in, and then I use the roller that I molded them off to put in and trim off any excess so you're just cutting it off to the top level of the cake this created the perfect pocket size for the little chocolate balls that I bought to make the cake with once it was all done I separated the chocolate from the board and switched that onto the base that we had made earlier be sure to leave the little lip for the fondant side panels to go on later and now you can place on the top layer of green fondant be careful not to stretch it out like I did or you'll have to go back and trim it like I had to. Once you've got it on nice and flush, you can go with your sculpting tool and cut out the holes for the pockets and just smooth them down. You don't have to worry about keeping these too neat because you can go back in and fix them up later. Once you've got the holes all cut out, you, I've had to go back and trim it off so it was nice and even. Then I used the piece of paper to cut out the height of the cake and then I could use that as the side panelling template. Just make sure you do the long side and the shorter side. You only need to cut out one of each. I used some brown fondant with some black and darker brown mixed through and I just sort of mashed that all together and twisted it until I could roll out and get a nice wood grain sort of look. If I was to do this again, I would try and keep the markings smaller because when I put the panels in, it sort of took away a lot of the wood grain effect. So it wasn't as effective as I hoped. Now, carefully transporting them to a board to dry on, and anytime I moved them, I just kept neatening them up because you need these really straight and in perfect condition. Cutting out all four pieces you need for the sides, and then you just gotta sit them to the side to firm up a little bit. I've added Tylos powder into this as well because it just helps. It sets a little bit, but not too much with the time frame I left it. It just makes it easier to handle and you don't get that wobbly side. Now it's time to assemble it all together. Using a little bit of water on a paper towel, I dabbed it on and then used a tool to push it up flush against the edges. And I did that all the way around, constantly just tapping it in and molding it a little bit, not too much, just enough to coerce it into the right position. It can be a little bit tricky, so feel free to cut off some cardboard and use it on the bigger pieces. And you wanna make it sit flush. On the corners here, I was going to do an overlapping effect, but I didn't like that, so I trimmed off and made it a little indented corner, I guess you'd call it. And then I added a round piece of fondant, which I later, you'll see I'll paint silver. It just gives it that nice little bordered extra detail. You can see I'm just cutting it out, and then I roll the snake chop it off to the length and just stick it in with a little bit of water and I think it finishes off that corner a lot nicer than what it originally was. Now for the top of the cake you're going to roll out a long green snake and then cut strips out which are going to sit around the inner edge and if you go a little bit too big you just push your finger around and curve it to the pockets. Um, I didn't really need to do that that much. There's only a, I think two corners and it doesn't really change the look of it that much. As long as it sits in and flush, then you're going to get some brown and do the same over the top. As you can see, I just placed them on a little bit bigger and then trimmed them as I went. And it gives that raised edge that a pool table has. I kept fiddling with this and maneuvering it around until I was happy with the final look. And then I added a brown over the top, sticking it down with water as I went. Again, I just kept it level with the sides, trimming it off where I thought it needed it. And I wasn't happy with the final look of the brown until I added in these little extra pieces, which I'll show you in a second. When I put it on the side, I made sure it was a little, I'd say two centimeter lip of the green showing and then it taking it to the edge of the brown. And you can see here, just making it nice and flush with the fondant smoother. And then for a little extra detail, I cut out two little brown pieces for either end that look like a little tray for the balls to go in. And I just stuck them down with some water. When you cut them out, you can just clean it up with a dry brush. One thing I did have to make sure was it was nice and level with the bottom so it didn't look wonky. Now for the little corner pockets, I used a little banana shaped piece of brown fondant that I flattened out and tucked around the edges. I think this helped give it the pool table feel I was after. And for the legs, I rolled a fat snake and pushed in the chopsticks that I cut out earlier, tapered them off towards the top and then used another chopstick to put in some lathed edging or patterning 
and put them aside to firm up. Obviously I used Tylos powder in them. Then I steamed the cake to get rid of the dustiness of the corn flour and now it's time to place the legs in. I just pushed them in as firm as I could and then sat the weight of the cake on them. This was quite easy to do with one hand holding the cake and just tucking them through the holes because I didn't have to pop the cardboard in. Using the weight of the cake I tapped it a few times and that secured them in nicely. Now it's time to go and paint in the little detailing of the trays and the silver edges for the corner. I found the silver paint was a little bit streaky on this type of fondant so I ended up just like putting a lot of silver paint on and then dabbing it. Now to make the little triangle you're going to put some Tylos powder down, roll out some black fondant, trim off a nice straight line and I measured that around six balls in the triangle fashion and let that harden and I used an edible marker to draw on the D and then it was time to put it all together. Uh, once the triangle had firmed up, I placed it on the table, added in the chocolate balls. Obviously I just grabbed all the colors I could, had a little white ball, picked up the little cue and racked myself up a pool game. As you can see, this worked a treat and you have a functional freestanding pool table cake. I'm so happy that this turned out because I wasn't sure if it was able to be done. As you can see here, I also racked it up as a billiard table. If you guys make this cake, be sure to send me photos and happy caking. So I hope you guys enjoyed this cake. Thanks so much for watching. Why not subscribe if you're new here? And yeah, now you can enjoy.